Welcome to the YouTube lecture series of the Mechanical Engineering Society. I am Glenn and this video will be all about fluid me, force upon a moving vein. In this topic, uh, the vein is part of a turbine which is just one, one of this curved vein or blade. So we are going to study about the effects of the fluid pressure when for example, a nozzle sprays water into a turbine so that it would move in this clockwise direction. So when we take a look at this part of the figure, we see here that that water enters here and then it would exit it would curve through the vein and then exit here. So we see that U1, we will designate this as the relative velocity of the incoming water. And then U2 will be the relative velocity of the outgoing water. So the, in this figure, the velocity of the blade will be moving towards the positive x-axis. So. In order to further understand this topic, we should draw a velocity triangle for each of the incoming and outgoing water. So the subscript 1 means that it is the ingoing water. So we know that the velocity of the blade or the blade is moving with a constant velocity to the right. And then afterwards, we draw the relative velocity u1 which is going in this direction and afterwards we get its absolute velocity which is v1 we just connect the tail of the velo vb to the head of u1 the tip to tail method and then we also can get the relationship of the angles so the angle between vb and u1 would be beta1 if you move this velocity vb to the right you would get this figure and then the angle in between vb and v1 is designated as alpha 1 so the next is the outgoing of the water in the vein so vb goes to the right again and then u2 we know is going here so to get the absolute velocity we just connect the tail to the tip again this is v2 and then the angles are just also the same it's from vb to u this is called beta and then from vb to v2 it would be called alpha so let me give you an example regarding this topic so in this problem, a 75 millimeter diameter jet has a velocity of 33.5 meters per second. It strikes a blade moving in the same direction at 21.3 meters per second. The deflection angle of the blade is 150 degrees. Assuming no friction, calculate the x and y components of the force exerted by the water on the blade. So uh, the problem gives us this diagram that the water enters in a in the positive x direction in the same direction as where the blade is moving which simplifies our first velocity triangle and the deflection angle is this angle here which is 150 degrees and we just call it def for short for just this video's purpose and then when we put the velocities in the diagram, we designate this as the ingoing, which has the subscript 1, and the outgoing, which is the subscript 2. And this is the direction of the blade. So it's moving towards the right. Uh, this dotted line is the trajectory of the water as it goes into the vein and then moves along its curvature. So the problem also states that there we should assume that there is no friction. That's why u1 would be equal to u2. Next, we would draw the velocity triangle 
of the outgoing water stream. So we know that VB is going to the right, and then U2 is going. This direction, this direction is the one going out of the vein. To get the absolute velocity, which is V2, we just connect the tail to the tip. So the, it, it was given in the example that this is the deflection angle, where the velocity of the blade is going there and then the outgoing is going there. To get beta 2, which is the angle in between VB and U2, we just get 180 minus the given deflection angle, which is 150 degrees. That's where we get the 30 degree angle. So let's, fir let's first solve the U1, the relative velocity. So U1 would just be equal to V1 minus VB. We got that from the velocity triangle, but in this case, it's just a line because VB is this part and the given v1 is this one which is in the same direction as vb so to get u1 we just subtract v1 and vb so when we do that we get 12.2 meters per second and the problem states that u1 is equal to u2 so we also know that u2 is just 12.2 meters per second also to get the absolute velocity at the outgoing jet stream we just apply the cosine law to the velocity velocity triangle diagram earlier so this is the velocity uh, this is the cosine law and we we have already computed for beta 2 which is what, 30 degrees so by plugging in the values we would get 12.3466 meters per second for v2 to get v2y uh, we just refer to the velocity triangle again and then we just get the y components of vb and u2 so in this problem it's only u2 which has the y component of the velocity so we just get u2 sine of the beta 2 which is 6.1 meters per second for v2x we have two components in here which is the x component of vb and x component of u2 which is u2 cosine beta 2 by getting their difference we would get 10.7345 meters per second we got this difference because uh, in the velocity triangle vb is going to the right and u2 is going to the left and we know that vb is greater than u2 that's why we subtracted u2 from vb so next to get the force of the jet we must use the continuity equation to get the q so q would just be equal to q1 and equal to q2 due to the continuity equation and q would just have a general equation of pi over 4 phi squared u by plugging in the values given in the problem, we would just get 0.0539 meter cube per second. So going to the momentum equation to get the forces, uh, we get first the force along x, and we would designate the direction going to the right to be the positive x. So it would be the P1A1 in the x-axis plus P2A2 in the x-axis minus fx would be equal to rho q times the delta v in the x-axis. But since the figures are exposed to the atmosphere, p1a1 and p2a2 would just be zero. Going back to the problem, we assume that uh, the forces would be just fy would go, go be up here and then fx would be going to the negative x direction that's why in the equation fx is negative and then we we are already given rho q and we have already solved v2x and v1x so by just plugging in in the equation uh, the rho the density of water is just 1000 and then multiplied by q and then v2x and v1x and we would get fx is equal to 1227 newtons
to get the force along the y-axis, uh, we say that the direction going up would be the positive y. So the equation of the mo momentum equation would be P1A1 with respect to the y plus P2A2 with respect to the y-axis plus Fy because we assume that the force along the y-axis would be going up would be equal to the density Q and then the velocity going out minus velocity going in which is V2 minus V1 but since this with respect to the y-axis it would have subscripts Y so since again the figure is exposed to the atmosphere these two terms would be zero so the simplified equation would just be Fy is equal to rho Q V2Y minus V1Y so plugging in the given data that we have and the ones we have solved it would just be 1000 times 0 0.0539 times 6.1 minus 0 V1Y is zero because the problem gave that v ones just going to the positive x direction which is going to the right so it has no y component so just by solving this would we would get 328.79 newtons